Hello, this is Steve, Dichroic Glassman. I'm going to do a follow up to the previous video about dichroic glass, beveled hummingbirds, and such. Now, in this video. So, let's talk about this from the beginning because it's about reinforcing. This may be redundant from the previous video, but it's about reinforcing the same thought. This is a typical butterfly GSD bevel cluster. We've seen these on the market before, used in patterns and for sale in online places. This is the large GST9 Hummingbird. Comes all prepackaged, it's in clear. All these are in clear, except till they arrive here. <laughs> the birds arrive clear, and a step-by-step -step process of laminating each piece, one at a time, with real dichroic glass, we're able to achieve a finished product. It's all the same process. Whether it be the large hummingbird, the butterfly, the dragonfly, the bee, or the small hummingbird, it's all the same process of taking two surfaces, two different composites, a bevel, a, a real bevel, or a jewel, and real dichroic glass, upon neither one do I make, I'm putting them together, and that's what I have created, is the process in order for that to happen, which requires no heat, no kiln, no heat. Its curing process is light, L-I-G-H-T. So it's a whole different process for some people who feel compelled to say this cannot arrive at putting two surfaces together to make it solid. You cannot separate if there isn't any heat involved. And for some folks, that's hard to overcome. One by one, taking them out of the package, putting them onto your pattern, through the process, you arrive at the finished product. Same process, no matter what. If your bevel is flat or your jewel, yes, you can do some other things, really pretty things. Jewels, as long as it has a flat back, no matter what the top looks like, as long as the back is flat, because we're using real dichroic glass that has to that comes flat and has to remain so without heat. Well, I put together a little pinwheel. How do you like this little guy? By taking a five star and now turning it into a pinwheel. A dichroic beauty for sure. Imagine having one of those as a rosette in each corner of your panel. Even some stained glass, as long as it has a very smooth texture on the back and not puckered and dimpled and, and wonky looking as you look at your glass textures, if it has a mere coat or close to finish like this, almost looking like a mirror, then you can laminate. In other words, put the two dichroic and that surface together as you see here. I created this so you could take a broken bevel cluster set that maybe these two pieces are broke and with your mindset and the way I show in my videos to teach you learn how to become adaptive. I could have just as easily taken the center out of this butterfly and utilized a texture to create more realism. In fact I don't even need to make this bevel cluster this cluster out of bevels in the future. As long as I have dichroics and I know my process and I use various clear textures, I can e create an even more impactful butterfly or part of the dragonfly, perhaps its tail or its beak, whatever process as you see fit. So anyway, wanted to give you an idea of how expansive this potentially can be. Through stained glass applications like this, you could take a clear texture and turn it into a border piece 
such as flute. Dichro eyes it, and you now have, well, that's a pretty poor example of being dusty, but you get the idea that with the same technology as you see here, this would be one incredible border of going up and around your patterns. So this has a huge potential. Anyway, giving a larger scope of the impact of dichroic bevels and jewels. Thank you for your time. Have a fantastic day. Bye-bye.